Okay, here's example 14 in our vectors topic. We're looking at equations of planes. So at the moment, we're looking at different ways in which the information can be given to us. Example 12, where we're given two vectors that lay on the plane. Example 13, three points that lie on the plane. So here's a slightly different way. We're told that we're given a point on the plane and it contains a line with this uh, equation in three dimensions. So again, what I would always suggest that you do is to try and sketch out uh, what the, the picture looks like. So here's my trusty uh, parallelogram and I'm going to stick in a, a normal vector. Oops. Uh, yeah. So here's our normal vector N. What have we got? We've got a plane containing a point and a line. So I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, well, let's put a point. Uh, I might have to redo it, but say I'll put my point, we'll call that A. Okay, let's put A at the foot of uh, vector N. Uh, and so we've got a line here, and I'm going to put the line through. I should actually use my line tool, uh, as I tell my students. Have we just got a line? Okay, here's a line, right? And we'll call that capital L. Uh, okay, here's the line L. And we've got this line here with this e uh, information. So what can we tell about line L? Well, line L uh, has this equation. There's two things we can take from it. We can take a direction vector from this line. And that's the numbers, the denominators of these fractions. So the direction vector is 3, 1, 4. Hopefully you remember that from... Uh, working with the equations of lines. And we also can specify a point that lies on this line. And that's from the top numbers. So we'll remember that you have to uh, change the signs or invert the signs. So negative 5 becomes positive 5. We've got a 0 going on there. There's no uh, adding or subtracting. And we've got negative 6. So from the equation of a line in three dimensions, we can get a direction vector and we can get a point. So let's add that information. If I'm going to call that point B, for instance. So B is here. It could be. And we know that effectively we've got now got a vector that lies on the line, vector D. So how does that information help us? Well, remember that what we're trying to do always is to try and make a, a effectively a normal vector and two vectors on the plane. So I'm going to redraw my parallelogram. Um, if I can find my parallelogram tool. Here we go. So here we go. And now I'm going to redo it. I am going to draw my normal vector up here. Oh, that's rubbish. Let's do that again. So draw a nice perpendicular, uh, nice line here. Right. So uh, here's my normal vector. Now I've got a, a direction vector on the plane. Now it's absolutely fine to then just imagine that line moving so that it passes through the, this bottom point here, right? So here's D, and that gives me one of my vectors on the plane. And I know I want another one, right? I know I need another vector going from this point away. So effectively, if I s still call that A, B is just somewhere nominally on the plane. It doesn't have to be uh, where I put it, but we've got another point B on the plane somewhere. So it's absolutely possible then to find another vector on the plane, which goes from point A to B, which are the two points that I now have in my ingredients. So I'm going to say that the point AB is B minus A, and that is 5, 0, negative 6, minus point A, which is 3, negative 2, and negative 7, which gives me the vector 2, 2, and 1. Negative 6, subtract negative 7 is positive 1. So what have we got here? We've got two vectors on the plane, so I can just go back to what I've been doing before, which is calculating the normal vector, which is going to be, this time, it's vector AB cross vector D. They're both vectors on the plane, and that's going to be the vector product i, j, and k. It doesn't matter which way around you put these vectors. Uh, so 2, 2, 1, and what was the vector? D, 3, 1, 4. 3, 1, 4. 
and we can go ahead and work out what that vector product is using your preferred method. So vector i, or using removing column i, I've got 8 minus 1. And column j, missing that, I've got 8 subtract 3 times 1 is 3. And missing out column k, I've got 2 minus 6. 2 subtract 6, which gives me 7i minus 5j minus 4k. Right, so this is my normal vector. I can't take a common factor out of that, so I'm just going to say ien is going to be 7, negative 5, and negative 4. Okay. Why have I done that? Well, now we can say that the equation of the plane, I think I've got all the ingredients for it, the equation of the plane is n dot r equals n dot a. So n we've nominated as 7, negative 5, negative 4. r is our x, y, z equals 7, negative 5, negative 4, dot, a point on the line. Uh, we've got two points to choose from, um, so it doesn't matter. You could argue that there's a 0 there, and so that might make it easier. So I'm just going to go 5, 0 negative 6. So here I'm going to say use point B. And if I w multiply all that out, I get 7x minus 5y minus 4z is equal to. Um, I'm just going to work that out quite quickly. So that's 5 plus 0 plus 24. Negative 4 times negative 6 is 24. 5 and 24 is 29. Just because I'm running out of space there. That's the equation of my plane. Okay, in Cartesian form. So we're trying to get the same, uh, although we, we get the different ingredients or the, 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 the um, information given to us, we're still trying to get to the point here where we've got a diagram with a normal vector and two vectors on the plane. So whether it's points we're given or lines, uh, we can always pull out the information that we need. Okay, hope that's helpful. You can go away and try a few more of these types of questions. And just one thing, remember, again, if I had chosen point A for my equation of my plane, the answer would be different. The, the number on the right-hand side would be a different value, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong, okay? It will still all work out. It's kind of hard to get a head round, but it's true, okay?